As we call our service to order this morning, let me direct your attention to a passage of scripture which is found in the book of First Chronicles, chapter number 16. We'll look at verse number 8 to 10 and verse 23 to 29. Thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people, sing unto him, sing psalm unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous, wondrous words. Verse number 23, sing unto the Lord all ye earth, show forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works among all nations. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. All the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Hallelujah. Glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his palace, or in his place, sorry. Give unto the Lord the kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. May God bless us as we worship him this morning. We just want to thank him for his faithfulness towards us. And let's just commit ourselves to hearing to God this morning as we give him the praise that he truly deserves. God bless us all as we worship him today. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the members from the Rose CUC and also La CUC. Today we have our corporate fast Sunday. And we are happy that everyone is here with us today. Also want to especially welcome those who are overseas and they are joining us today, friends of members and also family members who are out of state. We will now call on the worship team as they do a song.
David, our God, he reigns forevermore. He is still alive. He is certainly not dead. Amen. We'll now have the opening prayer and we'll call on Pastor George. Eternal God, we give you all the honor, give you all the praise. We come to you this morning knowing that you are faithful, knowing that you are God. We are so grateful, Father, for the opportunity that you have given us again to be in your presence, to really uplift your name. We are so happy to know that your kingdom is forever settled. And Lord, it doesn't matter what man may do or say, they cannot affect what is happening, what is taking place in your kingdom. And so we thank you today that you have made your kingdom available to everyone who would want to be a part of it. And so we are glad this morning to be a part of your kingdom. We are thankful to know that we are ambassadors of that kingdom. And as we gather this morning to represent the kingdom, to worship you, to give you the praise that is due unto your matchless name, we ask that your Holy Spirit will give us a special visitation. We ask, O oh God, that you'll minister to everyone present today. We pray, O oh God, that even as we come into your presence, that we will, O oh God, put aside every obstacle. We will, O oh God, turn off every distraction and focus upon you as we worship you today. We are so grateful, Father, that you have been with us throughout the week, that you have, Lord, protected us. You have been supplying our needs throughout the week, past week. Actually, you did supply our needs. And you, you promise of God to continue to do that. And so, Father, we are grateful for your blessings upon us throughout the past week. Lord, we have embarked on a new day, on a new, the first of the new week. And so, we, we just want to thank you, Father, for this privilege that you have given us today to worship you. You have said in your word that your Father is sick. You are uh, you're sick of such to worship you. And those of us who worship you must worship you, should worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, we ask that you'll help us, O oh God, to put aside everything that may, O oh Father, be a hindrance to our worship of you today. And we, we ask, O oh God, that we'll focus upon you and give you the praise yes. that is truly that you truly deserve, rather. We want to thank you, Daddy God, for being with us. And so as we gather here today through this medium, it is my prayer that every one of us will receive the blessing that we came here for today. Holy Spirit, minister to every one of us. And we pray that you will speak to every one of us, that, Lord, we will be, O oh, Father, prepared to receive everything that you have in store for us today. And God, we pray for the worship team as they will lead us into your presence. We, we, we pray that the songs that have been queued up for God, we will, we will going to use it to inspire, to challenge our hearts today. And we pray that even as your word will be ministered, that you will have your divine way, that you will speak to your servant in a way, oh God, that you have never spoken before, that out of the word that you will share with us today, Lord, will be a challenge will be, oh God, a, a blessing to our hearts and that those who are listening and have not yet given their lives to you, Father, will think twice of the life that they live and they will come to know you, Father, come to know his life eternal. I also pray that those of us who know you will be encouraged, you will be strengthened, will be challenged Amen. for your word today. Holy Spirit, visit us. We, we, we ask for a special touch, a special, oh God, visitation from heaven today. Lord, minister to your people today. Whenever your name of God has been uplifted through uh, the various mediums that are used, we pray that you'll encourage and challenge your people today. We bless your name. Father, have your divine way in our service today. And Lord, at the end, we'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that is due unto your name. Father, you've said that those of us who worship you must worship you in the spirit and in truth. And we declare and we declare in the, in the name of Jesus that we are going to do this, oh Father, in the in, 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 in spirit and in truth and that you will be praised and you will be honored and you will be glorified at yes. the end. We bless your name. Amen. We pray for those who are not well at this time but yes, still have joined in. We pray that you will touch them. We pray that you will heal their bodies. Those of Father who are not able to join us because they are not well, touch them wherever they are today. And Father, at the end, Lord, we will be mindful to give you the praise, the honor and the glory. Minister to your people wherever they are. There are those who are going through serious challenges today. May you strength for the may revive the spirits today and lord we just want to bless you and praise you he has his mercies in jesus name bless us as we worship you today 
in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Welcome again to all those who have just joined us. Today is a good Sunday and it's our prayer and fast Sunday. So we'll be committing everything to God today in prayer. We have our list that we are asking God to intercede for on our behalf. And as we join the worship team, the you see you see as they come to join us with a few songs in worship, let us continue to call on God and put ourselves in the frame of worship. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Thanks to the light. You see, you see for such a powerful so song. Indeed, he will make a way. We believe he can do it again. We are still in his hands. That for sure is our confidence. He has never failed us yet. Amen. I'll call on Pastor George now, who will introduce our speaker. Thank you very much, Sister Nar. We just want to thank God for you and for conducting uh chairing the service this morning. So we just want to give God thanks again for what he's about to do. And uh, at this time, we have with us this morning um, a, a brother who has fully committed and dedicated his life to, to, to God, who is totally so loud to God. And we just want to thank God for him. We appreciate him for his love for God and for the kingdom. To bring forth the word to us this morning, it's my greatest pleasure to present to well, our microphone's here. <laughs> Elder Derek, come on. Let's just give him a bless. Good big God bless you as he comes to the wood today. Let me say greetings to you, brothers and sisters. Those that are joining us for this virtual service. I say a blessing upon you. Today is a wonderful day. Today is a day the Lord is worthy of all praise. The scripture declares, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So we give him praise. We honor his name today. Today I have chosen to bring Rosa Church into your homes. And I hope and pray that indeed today together we will just have a wonderful time in the Lord. Bless his name. Let us pray. Great and tell God, we continue to give you thanks and we continue to give you praise. We exalt your name. We magnify your name, O oh God. We say great is our God and is greatly to be praised. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, his name is worthy of our praise. Father, I pray to God, even as about to break into your word, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would cover me under the bloodstained banner of the cross. I pray, God, that you'd anoint me, dear God, from the crown of my head to the sill of my feet. And even as I speak, thus says the Lord, I, I pray, O oh God, that your word, dear Father, will go forth, mighty God, in, in clarity, dear God, easily understood. Father, today I commit your word into your hands. I commit, the Lord, the years into your hands, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, that you will give us ears to hear and hearts to receive, even as we listen to your word today. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will come by the power of your Holy Spirit, O oh God, and that you would give direction, dear God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, to God, that nothing in me would be sin, but only, O oh God, that your word will go forth, O oh God. And I pray to God at the end of it, dear Father, we would not fail, O oh God, but to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor, mighty God, because you are worthy. Father, I ask and pray that you will come now and that you will take control and that you will bless, O oh God, and that you will have your way in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Indeed, God is worthy. It's wonderful. It's marvelous. You know, church, we, we serve an excellent God. You know, when we think of the goodness of Jesus, we cannot fail but to just give him all the praise and all the glory that he deserves. Because were it not for Jesus, we'd not be here today. So we bless his name. We bless his name. We say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Today, the world has found itself in a very unfortunate situation. With a dreaded disease, COVID-19, the coronavirus. 
And whereas there were those who predicted that one day the world will be faced with a pandemic, but I'm sure they never expected it to be so ruthless and dangerous. And we can see what is, what is causing around the world. This disease is a no respecter of persons. Anyone who crosses its path unprotected will be infected. It has infected millions, killed thousands. It has disrupted economies. And it has instilled fear and anxiety in the hearts of men. Our schools are suspended. Hallelujah. And more so, the children of God are unable to gather in the assemblies and worship like we once used to. And that is the state the world is in today. Chaos. All over the world. And if you're like me, that are, are, are looking at the news, you can see what is happening. So that is why I have chosen my, my, my message today to us, brothers and sisters, that God speaks to us in unfortunate situations. But I know for us as children of God, we are not surprised by this. Not at all. But the book of Romans tells us that, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. You see, even in this unfortunate situation, some good can still come out from it. I remembered the message I preached just before our service was suspended. I said that God can bring something good out of bad situations. And for many of you, you can testify of that. You know, even now, you know, we, you know how people testifying about how now, you know, with all, with all the shutdown and the curfew, that they are getting more time for Bible reading. Many are saying that they are getting more time to spend with their families. And that is good. And some are even enjoying the benefit of working from home. And that is good things. That is coming out of that. I know there are bad things as well because many have lost their lives. Many are still infected. But, you know, we sympathize with them and we pray for those that have lost their loved ones, that good God, the God of all comfort and grace will comfort them. So even as we enjoy these privileges in terms of, you know, time, you know, building a, a life of prayer, you know, getting more into the scriptures, you know, I show that, you know, God is speaking to us for his word. So there are lessons, like I said, that we can learn also from this unfortunate situation. And there's things that God wants to say to us. You know, it was just a few months ago, we were going about our daily business, to our jobs, visiting friends and families, attending our church services. And in a matter of days, all these privileges we once enjoyed was gone by an unwelcome visitor named COVID. You know, the Bible warns us, the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 3 verse 1, but notice that in the last days, perilous times will come. But I love the way the New Living Translation puts it. It says, you should also know this, Timothy, that in the last days, there will be very difficult times. And that's what we are seeing today. And when you look at the news, like, and when you see what is happening in Iran and, and in Russia, you know, I believe this week there, Russia recorded 10,000 new cases of this disease in one day. And in Iran and right now in Mexico, you know, it's chaos all over the world. 
So that should say something to us, church. The times that we are living in is difficult. And in Timothy, when he talk about perilous time, he say that men will become lovers of themselves, ungodly. And, and, and Timothy give us a list you know, of the characteristics of men in the last days. Children will be disobedient to parents. And we are seeing this happening right before our very eyes. Troublesome times that we are living in. The book of Matthew also tells us in Matthew 21 verse 26 that men's heart fell in them from fear and the expectations of those things which are coming on which are coming on the earth and from the poor's heaven shall be shaken. Men's hearts are, are literally today filling them of fear. We are seeing it all over the world. How people are fearful. People are, 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 are anxious. People are paranoid because of what is happening today in our world. The days we live in is not easy. It's not easy. But hallelujah. You know, you know God always has some comfort for his children. And in the book of, of Luke, it says, Luke 20, 21, 28, he says, now when you see these things begin to happen, he says to, to look up, hallelujah, that your redemption, joy of nigh. And I, I like what it says, you know. He says, when you see those things begin to happen, to look up, and he says, and to lift up your head, because your redemption, joy of nigh. You know, I've you know, reminded of a story that someone told me about this lady, that was walking for tongue and she was a, a born again believer. And that some noise happened in the sky, some flash, you know, some, you know, thunder and a, a flash, and she ran in a store. You know, and, and when they asked her what happened, she said she thought it was the rapture. That's not what Jesus is saying to us. Jesus said, when we see these things, we ought to lift up our heads. That shows there, when we lift our head, it shows that the level of confidence and expectation we have of the second coming of our Lord. We are comforted with these words to lift up our heads because of our redemption, joy of nigh, church, the coming of the Lord is drawing closer and closer. And as these events continue to, unf to unfold, the Bible tells us that we must pay attention to them and not to be distracted by them. Because you see, sometimes, you know, if all these things happening, you know, we can, you know, we can be distracted. But we, we, we ought, as children of God, we ought not to be distracted. Because you see, if we get distracted, it will cause us to be sidetracked. And we will lose focus. But rather, we say we ought to pay attention to them. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus speaking, he said, watch therefore. He said, he said watch therefore. For you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. So as these events continue to unfold, Jesus said to us that we must watch. Hallelujah. We must watch. And what does it mean to watch? It means to pay close attention to what is happening around us. That is what Jesus was saying to the disciples, you know. When he, when he, you know, he told them, you know, about the things that would happen in the last days. You know, he told them to pay special attention attention to these things and that's what you and I ought to be doing church so as we see all these events unfolding before us we ought to pay special attention to them we ought to be watchful watchful watchfulness also means that you and I ought to be on the alert hallelujah you see you know if a security is you know is you know guarding a place this security ought to be on, a, on alert because it's there to ensure the security of the place. And if he's not, if he's not alert, then, you know, a thief can come in and cause some havoc. 
So if we must, as children of God, we and I must be on the alert. It's also said, Jesus said to his disciples also to watch. Hallelujah. And what he was saying to them, that they must live with the expectation that he can come at any time. To live with the expectation that he can come at any time. That's what, when we, when we are watching, that's what we are doing. We are, we are looking, not like this lady, that when that thing happened in the air, she ran and hide. But we are expecting that our Savior will be coming at any time. We're living with that expectation. But not only did Jesus said to his disciples that they ought to watch, but he said to them, Therefore, you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not expect. You know, I was thinking and I was saying to myself, you know, somebody can be watchful and not ready. How many securities we know that are watching properties and they are not ready? Because if somebody comes, they are unarmed. You see, in watchful, wise watching, we and I must be ready. And when I talk about ready, what, what does it mean to be ready? It means that we must be in a state of preparedness. That is what, what Jesus said to them, be ready. It means that we must always be in a state of preparedness, church. Because if not, then we will lose out. You know, we, we, are, we have the beautiful parable, you know, and brother Troy, you know, teach us and that so well about those ten virgins, five foolish and five wise. And the Bible tells us the five wise virgins, they were ready for the coming of the bridegroom. They were in a state of preparedness. Preparedness. Hallelujah. And that is how we ought to live. That is how to have to leave saints because our Lord is coming soon. When we see what is unfolding, our Lord is drawing closer and closer. And now is the time to ask yourself, now is the time for me to ask myself, am I ready? If adventure, hallelujah, the rapture takes place. We need now, like the word of God say, to examine ourselves daily to ensure that we will not be caught of God like these five fooling, foolish virgins. So I encourage us to ensure that we are in a state of preparedness. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless his name. Hallelujah. And when we talk of preparedness, it calls for perseverance. You see, when an athlete is, you know, preparing to compete in, you know, in the Olympics or in any other sports, they know they go through a process of training, you know, and it depends on the, the sport they are playing, then they would, you know, work a particular muscle. We see those that they, they, they train vigorously to prepare so when they go and compete, they can be in a position to win that title. And for us, when we talk about preparedness, how do we prepare? It means, therefore, that we must persevere. Preparedness calls for perseverance. Because this Christian life that we are living, it's, it, it can be a little tough. You know what Timothy says in, in 2 Timothy chapter 7? Chapter 2, he says, 7 and 8, he said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And if we know the life of the Apostle Paul, you know that this man did some persevering. You know, this man has been through much. You know, he, the Bible says, you know, he has been in prison. He's been beaten. He's been shipwrecked. And on and on and on. But you see, in order for him to say, I have fought a good fight, he had to do some persevering church. And you and I too, the Lord, as we prepare ourselves, we must go through some persevering. There are some challenges that are going to come our way. There are some trials that are going to come our way. 
that we must persevere for them. You know, sometimes, you know, when things get tough, we, we easy to back out. When the, the pressure comes, when the tire hit the road, we, it's easy for us to back out. But church, I'm saying to us that we must be in a state, you know, to persevere through difficult times. Hallelujah. Job persevered through his difficult time. Hallelujah. And you and I must persevere when the difficult time come. You see, God will give us the grace that we need so we can persevere. So in our preparation, we must do some persevering. And Paul said also, he said, hear what he said in verse 8? He said, and finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not only to him, he says, and not only to me, but, but also to all those who love his appearing. You know, Apostle Paul ensured there that he persevered because he knew there was a reward. And church, there is a reward awaiting us. So I encourage us today to persevere through the difficult times. Not to give up when things get tough. Not to give up when things get tough. You know, sometimes we get a report from the doctor. And yes, we are humans. And sometimes, yes, we might feel a bit shaken our faith might be a bit you know tested but i'm saying to us when you get that news persevere for it god will see you through hallelujah in the name of jesus not only that we should persevere but also preparedness calls for endurance in hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 it states therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every wit and every sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run that race with endurance, that race that is set before us. We must run it with endurance. Church, we must endure. We must endure. If we are going to be prepared, you know, to, 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 when our master, when our Lord come, then you and I must ensure that we endure some hardship, some difficult times. You know, we have the perfect example in endurance. Jesus himself. Hebrews 12, 3 say, For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls you know Jesus endured some difficult times and he endured that with doing no wrong you know it is one thing for you to go through difficult time because you did something and you deserve it, but to be innocent. And yet still, he endured it. Hostility from the hands of sinners. He was spat upon. He was, you know, trampled upon. He was insulted. He was abused. But he endured, he endured, he endured, and he has set the example for us that we too can endure because he is with us. You see, Jesus came to earth on a mission, and it was for our redemption, and he didn't allow anything to hinder him, hinder him from accomplishing that goal so he endured much on our behalf and that is why we can lift our hands today in praise and say bless his name he endured much on our behalf church you and i are on a journey heaven is our destination and my encouragement to us today 
Do not allow anything to prevent us from accomplishing this goal. Hold on, I say to you. Hold on, I say to you. Hold on. God give the grace to carry on. God give the grace to carry on. So hold on. I know life can be tough sometimes. But God gives the grace. You know they say when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. But you know when the going gets tough, we can lean on the everlasting hour of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says that we can cast our cares upon him for he cares for us. Since he's no, he knows exactly what you are facing today. He knows the challenges that you have today and he's able to meet your need. The Bible says he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask of him. Church, I encourage us today we serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a God that does all things and does all things well. We serve a God that delights himself in doing the impossible on our behalf. And when you think that mountain is too high for you to climb, I want to say to you today that God, hallelujah, can carry you through. Hallelujah. But we too have to endure. Do not allow those trials. Do not those all the trials and those testings and those, those hard times we go through to prevent us from our destination. Hallelujah, that is heaven. Because we know that our Lord is coming soon. Bless his name. Bless his holy name today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say God will carry us through. Church, if we're going to endure, then we must, there must be patience. Hallelujah. The Bible says, for those who wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. And they will mount up with wings like eagles. But hear what James chapter 5 verse 7 says to us. He said, therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for his precious fruit of the earth. Waiting patiently for it until he receives. Until it receives. The early and the latter rain. We have to be patient, church. We know about for those of us who do farming, for those of you who do farming, you know when you, you plant that crop, you wait patiently for it, that you for you to harvest. And the same thing that you know James is communicating to us that as we wait upon the coming of the Lord, hallelujah, that we must be patient. Hallelujah. And he says to us in verse 8, You also be patient, establish your heart, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. The coming of the Lord is at hand, church. So I, I encourage us today to be patient, to wait on the Lord. To wait on the Lord. You know, sometimes, you know, we lose a little bit of patience. And sometimes we like to take matters into our own hands. You know, church, so, but I say to you today to wait on the Lord. To wait patiently on the Lord. You know, and, and sometimes, you know, based on the nature of the problem that we are in, sometimes it tends to stress us out. And sometimes we feel that God is taking too much time. And sometimes we go elsewhere and look for the solutions. But hallelujah for us as children of God, our, our problem solver, hallelujah, is Jesus. Hallelujah. Not no other one. Jesus. He's our provider. He's our keeper. Hallelujah. We can depend on him. He's a God that cannot fail. He's a God that has never failed. Hallelujah. There's, he's a God that is in control of our lives. We must depend on him, church. As we face these trials of life, I guarantee us that he will see us through. Because 
He's a worthy God. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. He waits patiently. He waits patiently for it. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer is also vital, vital, important in our preparedness. That our life must be girded under prayer. That prayer must be the foundation of our very lives. Jesus said in Luke 21 verse 36, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So not only Jesus said to his disciples to watch, to be ready, but he tell them to pray always. Always. To pray always that we must, you know, be in prayer. And when I talk about prayer, I'm not just talking about in terms of our own private prayers, but I'm also talking about collective prayers. Church, we must pray for each other. We must fast and pray. Because you see, church, it is through prayer that, that God sustains us by his grace. So when the trials of life come and we pour out our hearts before God, he gives us the grace to carry on. Hallelujah. The Bible declares we do not have because we do not ask. The Bible says knock and the door shall be open. Seek and you shall find. Church, we must be a praying people. And that is one of the areas the church continues to suffer. It's in the prayer life of the church. And if we understand the power of prayer and if we understand the purpose for prayer then our churches prayer would be the number one thing on the list and if jesus can say pray always jesus knows what he's talking about because it is through prayer we will be strengthened it is through prayer that we can build a solid relationship with our god the Bible talks about, you know, the, you know, the, wep you know, the, the weapon of our warfare, they're not carnal, they are mighty for God. And prayer is a, is, is a weapon that we can use to cheer down the enemy. In, in the book of Ephesians, they tell us in, in 6, he say that we must pray in all, pray in the spirit, but pray all kind of prayers. It is said that the, the enemy, he trembles when he sees the wicked, the wicked sin, sins on your knees. He trembles. And that is why, you know, that is why, you know, that sometimes he put all sorts of things in our way. All sorts of excuses when come to prayer. Because he understand it is that when we pray, we enter into the spiritual realm. It is when we pray demons will flee it is when we pray you know the enemy will crumble it is when we pray doors will be open it is when we pray we will be able to discern the you way know, what god is saying to us how god is leading us it is when we engage god in prayer and i'm talking there about fervent prayer the bible declares it is the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man that will avail much and that is what jesus was saying to his di disciples that they ought to engage themselves in prayer as they watch hallelujah as they watch so prayer i say to us is important and vital, vital important in our preparedness. In the book of Thessalonians chapter 4, it tells us to pray without ceasing. That we must pray all the time. When we drive, when we're on the job, when we walk, you know, somebody cross our mind. Some, you know, you pray and we lift them up before God because we don't know what the enemy might be planning against them. Church, I encourage us today that we must engage ourselves in more praying, especially now when we see what is unfolding before us. That times that we are living is not easy times and we have to engage our God. We have to engage our God. We have to engage our God in serious time of prayer praying and fasting many of us that have children 
Some of them have not yet trusted the Lord. We have siblings. They have not yet trusted the Lord. Some of us have parents. They have not yet trusted the Lord. We have colleagues. They have not yet trusted the Lord. And it's when we bring them before the throne of grace. And when we lift up their name before the throne of grace. That is when God will intervene. You see church. Only way heaven will intervene in earthly matters. Is when we engage our God in prayer. I encourage us today. Let's continue. If you are not doing it, I, 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 I beseech you to get involved, to, to get on your knees. Hallelujah. You know, and that is one of, the, one of the things I can say truly I have really benefited from. You know, this whole, you know, you know um, COVID, you know. I give me more time to pray, you know, and I've just set myself out to pray, to seek God, to hear from him. Hallelujah. And I, I, I exhort you today to give yourself to prayer. To give yourself to prayer, church. To give yourself to prayer. Church, as we see all these events unfolding before our eyes, God is speaking. And he's saying to us that his coming is at hand. I say God speaks to us in unfortunate situation and God is saying to us today that his coming is drawing closer and closer. The question I ask is what should we be doing as we wait, as we patiently wait upon the return of the Lord? What should we be doing? Because we know based on what we are seeing that the coming of the Lord is near. Should we just sit idle by and wait? I suggest to us, no. No. We should engage ourselves in something. And I suggest to us three things that I, 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 I believe that we should engage ourselves in as we wait upon the coming of the Lord. I suggest to us first, That we ought to live holy and godly lives as we look forward to the Lord's return. That is so important. Jesus said to us, be holy for I am holy. The Bible tells us in the last days man will have a form of godliness. Hallelujah. But the Bible tells us that we ought to be we ought to live godly. You see, the Bible tells us we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. You see, church, we, are, we ought to be a reflection of Jesus Christ on the earth. That our lives ought to be an example. Our lives ought to encourage people to come to know Jesus as Lord. We ought to live holy lives. We ought to live of sin. We ought to live lives that are pleasing unto God in these last days. We ought to let our light shine wherever we are. You know, people might want to call us, you know, when people see we are trying our best to live right, to live holy. They say, oh, you think you're more holy than anybody else. But don't worry with them. You see, when God is pleased with you, that is what matters. And whatever people think, as long as you live in right, as long as you live in holy, as long as you live in godly, that please the heart of God. Church, we are his representative on the earth. And we ought to live. The first thing I, su I suggest to us, that we ought to live holy and godly lives as we wait upon the coming of the Lord. And you know, when we live holy and godly, Hallelujah. When if, the, if, the, if our Lord comes now, we will be prepared. Hallelujah. We will be prepared. The rapture will not catch us on guard. We will not be left behind. Hallelujah. We, those of us that, those of us that died, the Bible said they will rise first. Bless them. But those of us that remain, if we are there still, that we will be caught up to meet our Lord. Because our lives is pleasing unto him. Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3, 10, verse 10. 
and 11 it states, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will be passed away with a great noise, and the element will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burnt. That is what will happen. But here what verse 11 says to us, Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be but in holy conduct and in godliness? Hallelujah. Holy conduct and in godliness. That is what that, is what that pleased and that is what that, that blessed the heart of God when his people is living holy lives. Hallelujah. When his people is living holy lives, God is pleased with that. You know, when Jesus got baptized in the river of Jordan, he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Because you see, hallelujah, Jesus did everything to please the Father. His life was pleasing and we too, our life can please him. Hallelujah. Our life can please him, but we have to choose to live holy and to choose to live godly. Secondly, I suggest to us we need to stay focused on what truly is important in this life and not to get sidetracked by the things that won't go with us into eternity. I want to read that again. I suggest to us that we need to stay focused on what truly is important in this life and not to get sidetracked by the things that won't go with us into eternity. You know, sometimes, church, we allow too many little pettiness to frost, to sidetrack us. Too many little, sometimes, pettiness in church to sidetrack us. Sometimes too many pettiness in our relationship with each other to sidetrack us, church. Sometimes we pursue things. Hallelujah. And I always say to my wife, you know, these things have to stay on earth. Father, and we, we do not prioritize ourselves and to pursue things that truly matter. And you know, church, what that truly matter is when we work for the kingdom of God because that is what that will go with us into eternity. And sometimes we go after all other things and it takes all our energy. It strains us and we do not have time to come to a Bible study. We do not have time to come to a prayer meeting. We, we do not even have time. We are drained so much. We do not even have time to come to a Sunday morning worship. Because our priority is upside down. You know Jesus. You know at the, at the death of Lazarus. When Jesus came on the scene. And the Bible tells us. You know that. You know, Mary, you know, just ran out to meet him. And Martha, you know, was in the kitchen preparing, I, I guess, a good meal for him. And, and, and Martha, the Bible tells us that Martha sit at his feet and would just listen to him. And as he deposited things within her, you know, May, May, Martha came and said, but Jesus, why Mary is not coming and help me? And he said to Martha, you see, Martha, Mary have chosen the best thing. And that's what we need to do. We need to make time to sit at the feet of Jesus. And when we sit at the things at the feet of Jesus, you know what will happen? Gee, we will prioritize the things that we ought to do, the things that is in, more important. And I'm sure, hallelujah, the Spirit of God will definitely tell us that which is important and it is things that will last for eternity. You know, sometimes, you know, in, in, in Martha's case, you know, what she was doing was legitimate. You know, she come and she prepared a meal and you know, you'd think that Jesus would say, well, that's good. You know, and sometimes we, we allow even legitimate things, you know, to distract us. 
Sometimes our work, you know, we say we have to put in those hours. Our, our home, we say, boy, I cannot go, I, I cannot, not, not tonight. I have to deal with that matter. I have to deal with those things, legitimate things. So we, there's an enemy that the Bible says he's a deceiver. He will always put stumbling block. Anytime he know it's things for church. Anything, anytime he know it's things to build us up spiritually. He will always put stumbling block in our way. And that's why we need to discern those things. And to engage ourselves in that which, you know, will last forever. Bless the name of Jesus. I suggest also to us. That you and I ought to be actively involved in the life of the church. You and I ought to be actively involved in the life of the church. As we wait upon the coming of the Lord. You know church, I believe that is one of the areas... That the church continues to suffer. It is said there that 20% of the members in the church does 80% of the work. And that is sad. Church, you and I must get involved. There must be something that we can do. There must be a ministry. There must be a gift, some talent we have that we can use for the upliftment of the kingdom of God. There must be something we can do. You see, Jesus tells us that he did not come to be served, but to serve. And to give his life as a ransom for many. We have a typical example in Jesus of servanthood. And that's what I'm saying to us today. We were saved to serve. You know, the word of God says, you know, the harvest is plentiful. Laborers are few. Hallelujah, I encourage you today. I encourage you today to give your life, your service to the church of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 states, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. You see, as we wait upon, you know, and Paul here was talking to the church in Corinth, even he exhort them about, you know, the resurrection of the Lord and their own resurrection. And he was basically saying to them, even as they wait upon the resurrection, that they don't have to sit there and wait, but they ought to be, first of all, they ought to be steadfast in their faith. And also, they ought to be immovable. Not be shaken by what is happening around them. Not to get discouraged and, and sidetracked and distracted. But they ought to be steadfast. They ought to be immovable. But also, they ought to engage themselves in the work of the Lord. In the work of the church. Because you see, there are many today out there that are still lost. There are many today out there that are living without hope. And it is through Jesus that we can meet these people. But if we are not engaging in the work, then how are we going to meet them? Church, is a, that is a, this, we're living in a dying world. A dying world. And you and I have the responsibility to reach these people. Hallelujah. When we get back to normal, which I believe... And I'm hoping that it will be very soon. That we get in back in evangelism. We are going on the highways. And we are going on the byways. And to spread the message of hope. Because we have the message. 
We have a message. We have a message, church. We have a message. I said to Rosal, in a message, and I'm saying to you, Lyo members, and I'm also saying to every person that is under the sound of my voice today, that we know a man, and that is Jesus. And we have a message that is the gospel. And, it's and it, is, it is able to transform the heart of men. And we cannot keep silent about it, church. We, have a, we know a man. We have a message. And it's, that message is the gospel. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. Hallelujah. Unto salvation to everyone who believes. And church today, even as we wait upon the coming of our Lord, I say to us that God speaks to us in unfortunate situation and we are dealing with one right now. His coming is near. We ought to be prepared. But also there are those out there that are not prepared. And you and I have a message that can reach them. Let us boldly go out and spread the good news. The good news about God's salvation. I said to us, many people out there are, are, are living in, you know, in fear and anxiety. Many are hopeless. Many do not know what to do, who to turn to. But we, hallelujah, we have a message of hope. Hallelujah. We know the joy of the Lord. We have experienced his peace. Hallelujah. And we can keep it to ourselves as our Lord draws closer and closer. May God bless us today. Heavenly Father, we continue to bless your name. We thank you, Lord, that you have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. We thank you, dear God, as your word declares, Hallelujah, that we are a chosen generation. That we are a royal priesthood, a peculiar people called out of darkness to proclaim your praise. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, the God, that we, we have security in you. We know, the Lord, that our eternity is secure in you. Oh, God. We thank you today. But, Lord, even as we thank you, we are reminded, the Lord, there are many today that have not yet experienced your saving grace. Oh God. And if, as, we, as we see things unfolding before our eyes, we know, dear Lord, that the coming of the Lord is near at hand. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, the Lord, that you, oh God, will, oh dear God, stir up something within us, a passion and a zeal, dear God. You stir up, mighty God, boldness and courage within us. Understanding, dear God, that there is life at stake and we have a message and we know a man that can reach them and can transform their lives. And I pray, God, that we'll go out with this in mind, dear God. And we would witness the love of Christ. We would witness the love of Christ. We thank you Lord Jesus that you came and you secured our eternity. We thank you dear God that we are comforted to know that. That when you call us home that we will be with you because the Bible declares to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But we are also concerned with those that are still lost. I pray God that it would be their God foremost on our minds. It will be the Lord foremost on our minds as we go out. Even through, through this week, Lord, through this week, oh God, that we, as we go out, this will be foremost on our minds. And that we would share that good news of Jesus. The hope 
of this world. The hope of this world. I thank you. I praise you, Lord. I pray, God, that your word today would just find a lodging place in our hearts. I pray, to God, that we would be challenged. We would be inspired, dear God. And I pray, God, that we will go out with everything within us. Everything that within us, oh God. A new zeal, a new passion, a new fire, dear God. To let men know, Jesus still lives. Jesus is still on his throne. Jesus is still in the saving business. We give you thanks and we give you praise today. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord. We bless his name. Hallelujah. Again, let me say thank you. You know, for the opportunity to speak to you, God's people. I pray that this word that I've spoken to you would be a blessing to you and, and that you really we can go out and really share that good news of God's salvation, Jesus. May God bless you. May God keep you. And may his face continue to shine upon you. Hallelujah.